hello and welcome to one of my most long awaited videos i have been meaning to make this video for a while and just haven't really had the time or the energy to do it but we are here today to talk about how exactly i became a copywriter and how you too can get started as a copywriter it's honestly a lot easier than it seems i think that a lot of people can feel as though getting started as a digital nomad or creating some sort of online income is really difficult but in reality i personally don't have any university education i have never worked a normal nine to five job before and it only took me around six months to be able to start landing some really high paying contracts and in this video i'm essentially going to be sharing with you the exact formula that i used to land some of the jobs that i have now i have since started copywriting gone on to make anywhere from 30 to 80 dollars an hour depending on the contract that i'm working on and the article that i'm working on i have written for adidas brandtastic i have landed some really solid well-paying jobs and within a year and a half have gotten to the point where i'm able to sustain myself wholly completely and pretty comfortably off of copywriting and so in my experience it's just a numbers game and it's all about having a formula that really works for you i've used this formula i have shared this formula with friends and they have also had a lot of success using it to land jobs and today i am going to share it with you so let's get started so step number one is to decide on the kind of writing that you want to do People often use content writing and copywriting pretty interchangeably, but in reality, there's actually a big difference between the two. So me, for example, I am a content writer, and that means that I focus mostly on long form content. I do a lot of blog posts anywhere from 1000 to 5000 word range, and these articles are written to sell. Often we are doing like, I'll write product reviews, or even if I'm writing an article about something kind of unrelated like something if i'm writing an article about something that is purely informative you will still usually put some sort of call to action in there um if i'm writing an article for example about like depression then it's like i'm gonna insert in there somewhere like good journaling apps for depression or new nootropics for depression or something like that so there is still some intention there to sell a product but in comparison to copywriting which is things like email copywriting, creating landing pages, that's a lot more sales heavy. And because of that, you need a more of a technical background or not even technical, but you do need to have some sort of skill relating to, you need to really understand how to sell something. Um, these like a landing page, for example, is really succinct and there's a certain formula that you use in order to be able to entice people to buy and to convert so in my opinion i think that starting off with content writing is good because it gives you the opportunity to test the waters and to build your skills in writing in general it doesn't have to be as sales driven it's a lot more open-ended that being said i know that a lot of people choose to start off with things like product descriptions and amazon listings and that is also something that is more copywriting related but doesn't necessarily involve as much skill so that is another good route to go but i recommend content writing i really enjoy it obviously there are people that start out with copywriting and just go straight into the sales and that's definitely possible but for myself personally i recommend more long-form content and the next step is something that I actually resisted doing for a long time, which is to get niche specific. So getting niche specific simply means that you just decide on a niche and you just write articles within that. So me, for example, I am in the health and wellness niche, which means that I write articles about anything from like compression sportswear to articles about depression to articles about running running while pregnant supplements sexual health like anything that is health related that is something that i can write about yoga um stuff like that other niches that you could choose that i've seen that are popular is like health and beauty so writing about skincare products makeup products stuff like that writing about pets 
um, the best leash for pets, what to do if your dog won't stop barking, stuff like that. And the reason that I was really resistant to becoming niche specific in the beginning is because as you're flipping through Upwork, for example, Upwork is what I have used to lend like 80% of my jobs. That is really where I recommend starting out. And as you're going through Upwork, you're gonna see a lot of different articles in a lot of different fields. And so getting niche specific, I was resistant to because if I'm niche specific, then that cuts me off from being able to apply to 80% of the jobs that are out there. It limits me to only being able to apply for the 20% of jobs that are actually within my niche. So it seems counterintuitive that getting niche specific and cutting yourself off from a large segment of the market would land you more work. But the reason why this works is because when you get niche specific, you're able to create a niche specific profile, you're able to create niche specific proposals, and you're able to write articles that are all within a certain niche. So it allows you to really posit yourself as an expert instead of being like, hey, I'm a writer and you should hire me. It's, hey, I'm a writer and I've done a 200 hour yoga teacher training. And these are all the articles that I've written in mental health and sportswear and running and yoga and blah, blah, blah. So it really just allows you to, yeah, as I said, posit yourself as an expert and create a really strong body of work that showcases your talent in writing about a specific thing, which actually allows you to get a lot more jobs. So getting niche specific, deciding on your niche is the next really important step. After you've decided on your niche, the next step is going to be building your portfolio. So writing samples is going to be the thing that ends up landing you the most jobs. Your profile and your proposals are also really important, but the thing that people are really going to look at when they're deciding whether or not they want to hire you is your samples of work, because that's what showcases your talent. So applying for jobs and just being like, hey, here's my expertise, but not providing any sort of samples, I can basically guarantee you that you're not gonna land a single job. So it's really important that you spend a lot of time and a lot of care and attention on this step. So building out your portfolio is relatively simple, a little bit, um, a little bit time intensive, but definitely well worth the investment of your time. And the easiest way to do this is to simply say that you end up deciding on your niche as being pets. Then you're just gonna Google popular pet blog topics. And then after you Google that, you're going to go through the list of all of the things and you're going to choose 10 popular topics that you can write about. Maybe one is like, I don't know, the best dog food to feed your pet or the best leashes or what to do if your dog won't stop barking. Whatever it is, you're going to choose 10 topics and make a list. And then from there, you're simply going to go through and write 10 articles about these different topics. And from there, you're gonna have a strong writing portfolio that you're gonna be able to use to apply for jobs. And when you apply for jobs, you're gonna include samples, either that are the most relevant or that you think are your three best. And after this is where the fun really begins because at this point, you're gonna be ready to start building out your profile and your proposal and start applying for jobs. At this point in the journey, it's really easy to start getting thrown off and start feeling dejected, especially if you are comparing yourself to other writers. So it's really important that you remember that the profile, your profile and your proposals, yes, they're important and you want them to sound good, but it's not gonna be the be all end all. My profile and proposal that I was using when I first was applying for jobs was honestly not very good. Um, and I, it's my personal opinion that the samples that you include are going to be way more important than what you say on your profile and your proposal. So my recommendation for this step is to go onto YouTube. There are so many videos on how to build a profile and proposal on Upwork. I would say go through those and just leaf through until you find a creator that you really vibe with and just use their template. Go on places like Fiverr because they also have a lot of freelancers that are applying for jobs and even just Google copywriting resumes, just so you can get an idea of what you should be including in this part of your process. There's really no one size fits all for what you're gonna put on your profile and your proposal. So don't take it too seriously. And also when you are going through and finding other creators to take a little bit of inspiration from, don't compare yourself. It is so easy to get lost in the comparison game and look through these people and be like, 
oh, their profile sounds so good. Their proposal sounds so good. I'm not gonna be able to compete with them. Literally just fucking get it done and start applying for jobs because the only difference between the people who are copywriting online right now and the people who aren't copywriting online right now is just the fact that they had the balls to just go and do it. Getting started in online work and getting started in any new job in general, basically you just have to be all right with with not knowing what you're doing and just sticking it out and just believing in yourself. Um, in my personal opinion, I always was applying and landing jobs that were outside of my skill set. And I just had to learn on the job and just trust that I could do it and just try and be savvy with it. Chances are when you start applying for jobs and landing jobs, there's a good chance that you're not going to feel as though you actually have the skill to be able to complete it. But there are so many things on Google, you can literally figure out fucking anything. Like if you wanted to, you could basically teach yourself overnight how to do like 80% of the jobs that are being offered online. There's online courses through places like Udemy and Skillshare. And if you want to do this, you will be able to figure it out. You just have to have some grit and some determination and to stick with it. I will also say that I have applied through Upwork and places like Indeed for over a hundred jobs, like easily over a hundred jobs at this point. And the majority of them, I don't hear back. Getting a good job is also a numbers game and it's about just taking the rejection as it is and just continuing to put yourself out there and apply for jobs. Maybe it's gonna take you two months of like consistently applying for jobs and redoing your sample articles and whatever to be able to start landing jobs. But I guarantee that if you stick with it, you will start making money on these sites. It is so possible. So ju just do it. Just step outside of your comfort zone and make it happen. I'm also gonna do a small personal plug here and say that I also have a copywriting ebook that is literally $17 and is a much more intensive step-by-step -step guide on everything that I've outlined here. I've also included the proposals and the profile that I used when I landed some of my bigger clients with steps on how you can recreate it for yourself. So if that's something that you wanna pick up, which I highly recommend that you do because this is literally the formula that has allowed me to make tens of thousands of dollars as a copywriter through popular up copywriting platforms like Upwork. So I'm gonna link that below and I highly recommend that you check it out. And even if you don't, I hope that this video was super helpful for you and that it allows you to go after creating an income online and being able to live abroad like I do, work from anywhere in the world, escape the office, escape the nine to five, and just experience financial freedom, which is pretty amazing. So. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.